Welcome to Two Beards Podcast, episode 160. Whoa! That's 10 more than 150. It's one more than last time. That's crazy, dog. Uh, This week, we are drinking Milo, or Milo. It is a continuation of a series uh, from Fremont Brewing in reference to our favorite four-legged friends, not cats, dogs. Um, Obviously. Ollie, then Milo, then Baxter. Um, You're like, hey, didn't you guys already do the Baxter? Like, yes, we're doing them out of order. Why? Because we did a cold IPA in Seven Seas, and then Baxter was a cold IPA. This, just your run-of-the-mill standard IPA. Yeah. Um, that's all, yeah. That's all I gotta say. You can you can talk now. Well, you, it's a podcast of two people. Allegedly, um, it's seven percent. That's neato burrito. <laughs> How like, does that differ it. from the other? Done one? talking for the rest. <laughs> I don't know. Seven percent alcohol. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna drink this. <laughs> Back to you, Levi. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I always love the like. I have this weird like I like Family Guy, but it's also like fucking dumb. Um, yeah, I see that. Yeah, but like, like you catch Family Guy or a Family Guy funny clip. Yes, great. Yes, but you're never gonna sit down and be like, I would like to watch some Family Guy right now. Yeah, nonetheless, more than one episode. Like, no yeah. shot, no shot. But I always love the shit when they, uh, they cut to the weather, dude. They're like, "How's the weather out there, Ollie?" He's like, "It's raining." He's like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> or he says, "He says it's raining sideways." Okay. Yep, good to know. <laughs> uh, Ibus, don't give a fuck about those, but allegedly they're 80. And uh, back to you, Levi. Churro hops. Hops. Churro malts. Come again? <laughs> how's, yeah, that, how's that go? Hey, I'm inventing. So, Churro is this very unique hop that's only grown by the Fiala <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the things that Nick and I hear at breweries I mean, and bars and life in general, you know, life. And, uh, but there's Idaho, Idaho seven hops, <laughs> cryo to be specific. There's some Columbus, Centennial and Simcoe, all uh, very Western hops. Uh, Centennial Simcoe are very PNW for sure. Definitely very PNW and like fairly on the bitter end. Idaho 7, especially that it's um, uh, cryo, is probably very juicy and melony and delicious and hoppy and just good and tasty. So I can't remember the last good. time I've had this beer, so I don't even remember what it tastes like. So it's I'm excited. So because this is Fremont uh, is consistently on a roller coaster a yeah rocky path uh as far as their beers go sometimes they release a banger and then there's quite a few times where they release a not banger uh, and we walk this road together even yeah. though it is lonely but but i will say this series of beers that they've been doing with our doggo friends uh they've been killing it Thankfully, I'm impressed. Like, I would hate for them to taint the name of dog. That would suck. But no, I'll, I think Ollie is like currently standing at one of our favorite beers. Like, that's just such a fantastic beer. Uh, this one, personally, after tasting it now again, because I'm with you, I haven't had it in so long. Uh, better than I remember, actually. Yeah, I mean. So granted, it's out of season right now. Like, yeah, this, so this is quite an older beer. The The availability of. The Milo is September to December, so this is probably this was definitely purchased sometime in that range. So it's definitely older. So granted, <laughs> there's going to be some funk that we taste that's probably not in like a fresher beer. And uh, I do think they are designed to be released seasonally and drank more or less fresh. Not not quite like uh, Stones, like thirty day window, but yeah. Uh, Probably not wait eight months either. Well, yeah, I mean, just in general. I mean, and that's that's what Stone will tell you, too. It's like, is the beer bad after these 30 days? No, but like, it's just, it's ideal. Like, especially when you're talking about IPAs that are 
I won't even say hop forward as much as I guess hop centric. Um, it's it's just a lot more pertinent to uh, to the flavor of those beers to drink them as fresh as possible. So uh, whereas like a stout or a porter, it's like yes, they have hops in them, but like you're really not getting a lot of the nuances out of those hops as you do in like an IPA or pale ale. And I think even more so when you add in things like cryo, things oh, like yeah. fresh hops, right? Absolutely. It, it, it's even more valuable in the freshness. So, yeah. Like, I do taste some funk in this, and I, but I, but like, <clears throat> yeah, I don't remember drinking this and thinking it was funky. So I'm guessing I'm going to chalk that up to just age. I don't know if you taste the same funk, but no, I do. Um, I feel like that note was there, but it's a little more accentuated now. The time has passed. So like, cause it's almost like, like, I don't want to throw you off either, but like, it's almost a bit soapy. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And like that taste is a thing that happens in certain IPAs. So like, like you're right. It could have existed. Yeah. But it's how much does it exactly play a factor. Yeah. Well, and two, like you think there's there's a lot of flavors in, in in beers, and you think, you know, there's some there's some flavors that are good when it's intentional, but when you get that exact same flavor that you can tell you're like, oh my god, they did not try to do this. Like it's just not working in this beer. So uh and yeah, so this openness, like, I don't know. I yeah, I think you're right. I think it's just because it's been sitting for a while that it's as strong as it is so if you are getting into beer or are into beer and want to know like because i think we talk about this a lot like our perception of hops and like like granted we're not like experts on each hop varietal and what their flavors are and everything but i would recommend if you have the chance go to like a local uh like homebrew shop or order online uh you can get like a low volume of hops and just like like when we brewed beer like that was really helpful for me like just smelling yeah. them and just like kind of knowing what they smell like um on like particular varietals like because yep. you can once you smell that and you can associate it to like oh this is mosaic oh this is idaho seven it really helps you like train your nose and your senses to be able to call out those flavors in a beer no, 100%. And and even like in for, you know, I, I do feel like most major areas do have a homebrew so- store of some sort. Um, I think Yakima Chief Hops, I think you can buy them online. So, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you can have them shipped wherever. Uh, but also like there are a lot of beers that just like throw up on their can what hops are in them. There's uh, a handful of breweries that do like one-off series is of like specific hops you know yeah, we talk a lot about like smash beers single malt single hops those are good also another good way yeah yeah definitely which that's cool too because like it, I, I like getting the hops and smelling those because then you're like okay this is what the goal is right like this is like what you're trying for and then when you actually can get like a beer with something like that in it, then you could like, okay, this is practically what it ends up being like. And so, and then you can actually taste them. I don't recommend eating a hop. That's, oh my gosh, no. Yeah. I mean, try it. Maybe you like it. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I Especially because like, I think YCH only sells the, the pellets, like, God. It, yeah, probably not. A, like Just like bitter sand in your mouth. Like, don't do that. Like, I was thinking, like, whole cone or, like, even a cryo. Like, I mean, cryo's probably a bit sandy, but, like, pellets. Don't. I, I don't see the appeal in that one. Yeah, but maybe you like it. it. I don't know. Each their own. Just don't do that. <laughs> I wonder if you could, I think, grind up, uh, like, take a mortar and pestle, grind up a cryo hop or two, throw that in some guac. I mean, yeah. Uh, that could be pretty good. Right? I would fuck with that. Or would I, you, like, you would you obviously use Citra. Um, if you couldn't use Citra, what would you use? I say obviously, but, like, I don't know if that's obvious, but I want to eliminate that from your options. Fair enough. I think... I think Amarillo is a good option. Ooh, that'd be, I wasn't thinking about that. That'd be good. Yeah, I actually, I, that one just like popped out of nowhere for me. Uh, Amarillo would be good. I think, 
I think I would be interested in Idaho 7, too. I think I'd be interested in that one. The Melanie would be kind of funky, but... Yeah. I'm down for it. Yeah. What about you? What come to mind? I mean... The uh, Moteca, obviously. I don't, I don't know how I would get that, because it's a New Zealand pop varietal, but that's like... I, I don't know. After drinking a lot of E9 spears and they've been using those recently, yeah. some of my favorite beers, gotta be honest. Those are really good. Um, it's really good. Weird one, but a goodie. Uh, this one I would actually also like to smell so I could like really understand it more, but I, I, I find I enjoy it more than I uh, remember. Cashmere. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's one that like... Uh, yeah, I don't it's see too a, often. It's such a barely used one, but I yeah. feel like I enjoy it. Like I, I that's why know. I'd have to pick it out. But like, I'd be interested just to throw it out there. Yeah, I uh, actually I think Revolution has a Cashmere Hero, um, and I don't remember if I've tried it or not. I can't remember. They've done so fucking many of those, which I appreciate, but. I wish we could get Revolution out here. That'd be nice. Yeah. They should. I mean, I don't know. I think it's They're big enough. I, I honestly think they don't want to. I really I think they think, don't. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I think there's definitely like some hometown pride there because I mean they do have, which a lot of breweries do, but uh, they do have like a few beers where they're like that they can, and they're like this doesn't leave the Chicago land area. Like, like I'm sure there's parts in like even southern Illinois that don't get some of their beers. Yeah, I mean, same thing here, right? Um, Manny's. Manny's is a beer brewed by Georgetown. You can only get it at uh, local, like Washington, maybe Pacific Northwest. I don't know how far they go, but you can only get it on draft. Right. You, they don't can it or anything. This is their way to give to the restaurant industry and the people who carry their beers. Yeah. So it's cool. But also, like, I also want Revolution beer, so... Come on. Sell out, please. Uh, I was... So, I work for an uh, international AV company that's not based in the local P&W. Not the same company that I work at anymore. Correct. Yeah. And I don't know if we ever even said that, have we? I don't we? know. I don't know. We don't work together anymore. That's pretty great. So sad. <laughs> we have different emotions about it. Uh, anyways, one of the companies that we had uh, that my company acquired like well before I was there and stuff, but it was a company based out of Indiana. And one of my colleagues and I were discussing beer. Mm. And uh, we're talking about IPAs. From I, originally, they're from originally from this Indiana company? He, yeah, and okay. he's in Indiana. Gotcha. Somewhere. Uh-oh, I see where this is going. And I said, oh, what's, what's your favorite beer? You want to you guess what he said? <laughs> uh, would I be right if I guess? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to take it. Go out on a limb here because it's a very small Beer company and beer, like I, I, no one's even had this in Indiana, but Zombie does. I don't know, just a, just a thought. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> did you immediately start laughing, or did you give it a minute? I immediately started laughing, but it was like a like I don't think he noticed, it, like because it was like a stifled laugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of these. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you kind of like swallow the rest of it as as you're laughing it. Yeah, man. So that's man. Are you? Do you work with this guy often? Yeah, he's like actually oh, okay. like my counterpart. He's like a knock manager. You should go back to him now that you've probably built up more of a relationship with him. No, this was recently. This is like oh last okay, week. So okay, like, okay. I did. Okay, well, you still should go I, back I did to tell him. him. Oh, okay, so, yeah, I did okay. tell him everything. That's fantastic. So, what did he have to say? I can't remember, but it was just like, uh, like, I don't think I explained to him like the whole podcast and our like whole experience. Sure, but I did sure. like tell him like, it's so funny, like how much people fucking flip out over that beer. Yes. Yeah. Like it is a good beer. And yeah, that, no, that's, that's almost no the funny one's part saying about it. it's not a good beer. <laughs> that almost makes it more funny because like it is a good beer, but like fucking chill it's how so the same thing happened here with space dust now now space yeah. dust is like so prevalent it's literally fucking everywhere they like can bottle 
They can 12 or 16 ounces now. Like it's everywhere. Do you think people have chilled out about space dust or do you think like you're just kind of immune to it now? Like you hearing about it? No, I think they've chilled out about it. Okay. Like I think because it was new and it was a little bit hard to find, people were like, oh, you got space dust. It's crazy. Yeah. And now, but now it's so prevalent. It's year round. You can find it anywhere, any, anything That's you want. That's the difference, I think. And it's like, it's just everywhere. And zombie dust, apparently, it's not that way. It's like they release it, small batch. People go nuts and they don't release it. And Yeah, they'll do it like twice a year, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. So, which I mean, like, good for you. Like, a cult following for your beer is is good uh, publicity. So, yeah. and like, people have and it's it, a good beer. Like, exactly. again, I'm gonna go back to that. <laughs> like, if I go to that region and Zombie Dust is available, I'm also buying Zombie Dust. I yes. want to make that abundantly clear. It's yeah. not I'm shitting on the beer. It's no. just I'm shitting on the culture around it. No, three three Floyd's Brewing Company. They have a they have a handful of good beers, at least that I had in Illinois, and, and uh, I have not been able to make it out there because I don't ever want to go to Indiana. But uh, what I've had from them is pretty good. Like not like outside of Zombie Dust, they have some pretty good beers. So, but yeah, man, it's. Oof. Uh, but but kudos to them, like you said, for like having a cult following around this beer that is good, and that like it hasn't the fanboys haven't wavered, right? Like like how many? I don't even know how long they've been doing it. I think they've been doing it longer. I, I actually don't know. I was gonna say that they've probably been making it longer than I've been drinking, but I don't know if that's true or not. But either way. No, it's been a while. Yeah, you're old, bro. Fuck you. I know it's been a while. Um, and so like for for people to like not get sick of it, even though they're only doing it like a couple times a year, is is also impressive. I mean, I'm not sick of space dust. There was a minute I was sick of it. Yeah. Well, I was just sick of hearing about it. Really. Right. Like, chill. There are other good beers. I think that's the thing. Is like. <sighs> People pretend. I don't. I don't know that they pretend. I think. Yeah. I think they literally don't know. They just haven't branched out to like local breweries and stuff. Where like, it's like you guys know that other good beer exists, right? Yeah, seriously. And to be fair, to give them credit, I set out on a journey that I did not accomplish, but I got close enough. To where I don't feel the need to accomplish it, where I was going to drink every beer in Tacoma. Mm. I feel like I've got, I feel like we've gotten pretty fucking close, honestly. Like we've had every one of Seven Seas beers at this point. We've had every one of E9s that they've ever made, like pretty much. Like basic, we're, essentially. we're, we are now, like they change up their, their tap list every week. And we're getting to the point where every week we go, there's maybe, a beer that's new and there have been times where there is not a single beer on the list that we haven't had before yeah so uh sig we might as well have had them all <laughs> i'm never drinking another sig brewing beer again sorry sig we we have been to all of the breweries in tacoma uh black fleet i don't think i've had their dark like yeah. really dark stuff but Same. i've had most of their beers um what's the weird one off did did they close you said the the one off puyallup yeah uh wingman wingman they yeah. closed but i had most of their beers uh camp colvos I th i've only had like two of their beers i've had more but they don't have a very big lineup and they could i, I don't go there much so they could have more now but i pretty I, if if i haven't had all of them i've had like 90 95 percent yeah um what's the dystopian had almost all those like same thing probably where there's 80%. like percent there's a couple that are like weird like that barley just, wine or like yeah a weird that we stout. just wouldn't drink those are the major breweries and there's other ones that we've also been, like odin we've had everything um pint and pie i don't think we've even gotten close to pint and pie but i just don't think they're there's some breweries where it's just not worth it. Narrows. So like, yeah. I've had like <laughs> had like two or three of Narrows, and I'm I've like, probably had four or five. Like, I'm done in like because I've been here longer. But like, same thing. Like every time I have a Narrows beer, I'm like, 
I really want you to be better. I, and you, oh my god, I wish they were better because it's such a great location. Great location. They have some cool can designs. Like they have yeah. one, like the octopus wrapping. Like they're they're cool. Yeah. <laughs> Just are bad at brewing, yeah, which sucks. <laughs> but anyways, to get to my point, it was like I get how it might be hard to find good beer because there's a lot of bad beer out there. Yes, and we uh, have sifted through a lot of that. Yes, and. <laughs> You might find and latch onto a beer, but trust me, there is good beer out there. 2010. So, well before we started drinking. There you go. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite, like, if you were to say, like, anyone in the U.S., you could find this beer, uh, craft beer, solid IPA. Because I'm not going to let you say Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. It's not a solid IPA. Sierra Nevada Torpedo? No. <laughs> Come on. What would you say? Like, you should be able to find this beer. What, what's a good one? Oof. That's honestly really difficult because... At least it's a difficult question for me because I feel like I only drank... I'll call them countrywide beers uh, for a very short amount of time before I just started hopping into. Yeah, the, we we went through that cycle very quick. Yeah, very quick to where it's like I have not had a lot of that beer, and uh, and just immediately went to like, okay, what's hyper local? Like I want that. So I don't because honestly, like Sierra Nevada is the first thing that pops in my head. That's like countrywide. I mean, uh, actually, I'll say Stone. I think you can get a Stone IPA everywhere, I think and so. and that is far better than uh, Sierra Nevada's, in my opinion. I was also gonna like another brewery that I think Stone is better than as well. Lagunitas. You can find the Lagunitas IPA yes. anywhere, and that's a great one. Yeah, that that is a solid IPA. Honestly. Um, yeah, it's a good IPA. Like, don't get me wrong. I just think Stone is a better brewery. I agree. And, and so it's funny because Stone, like Stone's IPA, you can find just about anywhere. The, their better IPA, I think, is the delicious I IPA. I was about to say the delicious. But it's not everywhere. And I don't know but why. But usually everywhere, especially at like Costco's, has the variety pack. So if you can find yeah. the variety pack of Stone. That's, that's true. You're going to get four, like... Don't I don't love all of them, but you're gonna get <laughs> four you like I don't like <laughs> pretty delicious ones. Which one do you not like? The fucking tangerine one. I was about yeah. But. I didn't know that you didn't like that either, but yes, I don't like tangerine. Oh, no, it's so gross. It's in all of them. Unfortunately, it's the the stone, the delicious, the tangerine, and then they then there's like a wild one, and like there's a couple like weird ones. Yeah, um, what's, what's the ghost one that yeah, they'll the throw in there? That one I forget what it's called. It's like ghost something. Yeah. But. And that one always has uh, some floaties in it. It's really weird. I don't like it. Yeah, it's kind of some. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's a little too funky. I don't. I don't know what's going on with that one. I've also seen them throw the. Uh, I think you say is Zakovica. Mm-hmm. They're uh, like Mexican chocolate stout. I don't like that one at all. No, not a me beer at all. But some uh, people might like that. So Stone's a good call out. I was going to actually say, um, so Voodoo Ranger has... I uh, do always forget about that. Ranger series, the Ranger series. So there's the Voodoo Ranger and then there's the Imperial Voodoo Ranger, uh, the double IPA. Yeah. Those are pretty good. If you're if you're like a casual beer drink, you're looking for another good beer like that, the, you'll probably like those. And there's a ra- and that's a rabbit trail you can follow too because they have a lot of well that's what I was gonna say trails. they they if uh if they're if you're not a fan of them like I think Nick and I probably both say they're 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 pretty fine like I'll, I'll drink a Voodoo Ranger uh-huh. but like it's not like a go to but they have uh, a rotating series on top of that and that series is usually pretty fucking good yeah yeah absolutely yeah they had some solid ones. I don't know. All this to say, if your favorite beer is zombie dust, you're probably right. But try some more beer, please. <laughs> it is good. But when you're from Indiana out in the cornfields and your and your beer choice is zombie dust or what what's your light beer out there that you guys like? Like Natty or Miller. Miller. It's Miller. Miller it's on it's Miller or Bud. That's 
That's it. Uh, I think uh, when I'm in Florida, I see everyone drinking uh, Michelob Ultra, I think. Fucking weird. Yeah. People do not drink that. In I'm, the weir- I'm the weird person drinking Bud Light. That's crazy. I, be, be, I had not even heard of Michelob until I moved out here. Huh. Honestly. It's, it sounds funny where, like, I will call uh, Miller the Midwest beer, but that is fair because they are from Wisconsin. So, But it's like, why? I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way. Actually, PBR is pretty big out there, too. PBR is a good one. Which is from Chicago. Uh, you ever think, like... You ever think it's weird when you go to a bar... Yes. And you get a Bud Light, and then you look no. around, and everyone's drinking just a normal Budweiser? Oh, yeah. Or you get a Bud Light, and or uh, you, get a, you get a High Life, and everyone's just drinking Miller whatever. Like a Miller Light? Yeah. Dude, it's man weird. I because like because like there's objective. Like I'm sorry, but it's objective. They're they're they are better beers, and they're like the same price. Like the High Life is better than the Miller Light. Bud Light is better than a Budweiser. Yeah, I'm it's, sorry. It's, it's just it's a fact. It is a fact. You can ask just about anyone too. It's just there are weirdos when you go into that bar, and it's like there's what just like are a cult, you doing? There's like a cult favorite in that like subculture, and I don't, I don't get it. My yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what my dad would say, but he basically would always say something to the effect of like I'd rather drink piss than Budweiser. Like, <laughs> fucking hates that. He's definitely a miller guy um but i i don't think he hates bud light so much so because it's just objectively better i went into a taco place and my hat says bud lucky and it's a play on bud light for uh saint patty's day and the talk this british guy that was serving me tacos which is really weird yeah what yeah like the first i can't get past that the first i sent you a picture of those tacos yeah right that when i sent you that picture that was like a like barely speaking english some sort of spanish speaker i assume (laughs) mexican cuban we're in florida so right next time we go i'm getting served by this british guy and i was like weird where the fuck is this the same place yeah uh and he's like oh is that a budweiser hat and i was like a, I was like, I didn't, I didn't really understand like what he said and what he was referring to, and then I remembered my, the hat that I was wearing. I do that all the time, and I was like, yeah, it's like I just throw on people. Like, I have like four or five hats, that, yeah, like, trucker hats, and they all feel the same to me. They're all trucker hats. I just throw on. Well, I don't even know that I'm wearing a hat, like because <laughs> I'm just always wearing a hat. And some people will comment on it. I'll be like, what? Like, oh, you're, like you're wearing a harbor hat, and someone will be like, what's harbor? And you're like. What? Or I love that band. Like, what? My, this is black. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> got it. Like, eventually, I'll probably get there, but, yeah. like, yeah, it, it takes me back for sure. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? But, yeah, he said, nice Budweiser hat, or or is that a Budweiser hat? Yeah. And uh, it's like, it took me a second. And then I was like, oh. I was like, Technically. do I correct him, or do I... And then I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a Budweiser. Always. It's definitely not worth getting into the conversation. You see, they are owned by the same company. In fact, the, the company that owns them owns a lot of beers. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah, tech. And they're like, all branded individually. Yeah, technically, so, someone yeah. owns them. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. That, uh, what kind of glasses do you wear? Let's go down this rabbit hole. God. Do you know... Um, what's... Well, so, that's not how I wanted to start this off. Let me take that and say something else. Put it else. in your pocket. Yeah, I'll save that. I'll save that intro for later. So, Anheuser Busch also owns Ballast Point. Yes, I knew that. And uh, speaking of, just pause. Yeah, that's. I recently overheard a conversation at a bar where someone was describing their favorite beer, and it ended up being the Sculpin IPA. Continue. That's fine. It is a good beer. I do like it. I haven't had it in a long time because it's always like $17. But imagine that being your favorite beer. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think it'd be my favorite beer. But again, I think it's fine. I think it's less funny than zombie dust, that's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But uh, so shortly after Anheuser 
acquired Ballast Point, they built a tap room in Chicago. It was fucking beautiful. Huge. Fucking huge. Huge. Fucking huge. And um, I guess they actually had brewing operations set up there to do like one off shit. And um, in the, I think it was either right before or during the pandemic, they ended up closing for good. Wow. I know, right? Like, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, right? Like, a, a, a big brewery. B, Jesus Christ. Uh, Anheuser Busch owns you. And C, a gigantic city. And D, it was it was in like downtown Chicago too. It wasn't in like some weird ass neighborhood. It was like downtown Chicago. So much fucking foot traffic, and they went out of business. Whatever. Yeah, that's gnarly. I know. I thought that was so weird because the last time Renee and I were there, it's like, oh, we should go there. I forgot about it. Like, because they have good food there, and it's a really cool place. And yeah, I was like, fuck, out of business. That's that's actually one thing that's like kind of surprising um maybe maybe not surprising okay i think it's interesting about chicago i think la is very similar uh that like tacoma doesn't have um i don't think seattle really has this uh florida i haven't really experienced this outside of a couple like huge breweries and stuff uh brew pubs like like how they're like actual proper restaurants with alongside breweries. Like usually it's just like snacky restaurant, like, or like faux restaurant bullshit food. Like it's not even like a restaurant restaurant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when we went to half acre. Yeah. Felt like it's a restaurant that's, also a brewery compared to like when you go to like black fleet it's like a restaurant or it's like a brewery that's also trying to be a restaurant but like can't i get that uh i get what you mean to uh elaborate that's not the right word to to further expand upon to say more words about to drill down a uh, half acre. So they, their original location was like where we went, but a way, way smaller. So it was like, you know, a brew pub. It had yeah. their restaurant, they got their brewery operations in the back, and they outgrew that. So they, they kind of did what Revolution does now, where they have like their brewing operations somewhere else, like their main operations. And then they did like one off small batches of shit in their original location. And they still had that open for a restaurant. And then they moved all their operations to where we went. So now that place is like fucking huge. And they turned that into a brew pub as well. Well, don't you guys also have like a Lagunitas brew pub or something? Yeah. I stupidly don't know why. Have never been there. Yeah. Yeah. But But it's just things like that where like basically what I mean is like, they can ex like they are big enough to execute on both, like and I'm I'm guessing it's split operations effectively, like probably yeah right. It's not like at Blackfleet, it's a single owner, single like I'm guessing single operation kind of thing. But like I just don't think you can do both well under like single operation management. Um, I don't know. The closest I thing I think we have is E9 having their restaurant in the now the brewery's off location. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so too. But I, I don't know. I get weird vibes about like how the tap room talks about the restaurant. Have you gotten those same vibes? I, I'm, like they, they're not... I'm not sure that they're like completely affiliate. Like they're like, yeah, but nah. Like do they do they do any operations out of the restaurant anymore? I don't think they do any brewing brewing out of there. So maybe that's why, because they're like just strictly a restaurant, and maybe it's like one's restaurant bar, and like it's like the owners divorced. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll take the brewery. You, you you take the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, maybe something like that. Honestly, yeah. I don't know. But no, I'm with you. Like they definitely like they operate as like two completely different places yeah but i don't know it is weird but that's the closest thing i can think of to like 
craft beer and like good food. Well, right. and that's the key, right? Like both done well yeah, because you, I mean. you have places like the Ram, which like I feel like both their beer and their food is very mediocre. BJ's. Yeah, right. Which and they're not even from here. Are they from like, did they start? I have in, no fucking clue where they started from. I feel like they started in California. Uh but yeah, I don't even. Ugh, I don't even count those guys. Would That's you rather worse. go to BJ's or the Ram? I don't know. I'd rather go to the Ram. I'd rather go to BJ's. I think it's hard. I think BJ's food's better. I think the that's Ram, why I'd rather and, go there. And the Rams beer is better. But like, I'm not. I'm probably not gonna get one you're of not, their. Beers, you're not loving so. the beer anyway, so you might as well go to the place with better food. So and, yeah, and I guess like, I'll be order a cocktail or a, like a a Voodoo Ranger on draft. For you know, future not. reference, I will be going to BJ's over the Ram. <laughs> if anybody asks me, you now know your answer. So, um, to expand upon the ballast point thing again, uh, it did start as a COVID-19, like we're shutting down because of this bullshit. And then they're like, actually, we don't like this. And so they just closed it. Actually, fuck you, Chicago. Yeah. And your weird alien lizard person looking mayor. This is <laughs> true. This specific article quotes it as that a Chicago outpost didn't align with the strengths of the iconic, though sagging, whatever that means, San Diego brand. They called the brand sagging? Yeah, I don't agree with that. It's It's the Chicago Tribune, so they're a bunch of fucks. My guess is like, like, yes, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that I agree with it. Like, Ballast Point was never huge. No. Like, like, it was a semi-popular California brand beer. They, I would say they did exceptionally well in California. I think they did really good, and they murdered the San Diego scene. And like their tap okay, room, San Diego. Have yeah. you been to their their San Diego tap I don't room? I've been to the San, Diego, but I don't Dude, know what you're about. that place is fucking rad. Like, but like really cool. But you vibes. know what I mean? No one's like talking about Ballast Point. Like it's their favorite beer. That one Except guy. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it's I mean? Not even like from it, there, probably. Maybe I, I don't, don't know. know. No, I, I don't get, think you have like widespread appeal. Like you've never had widespread appeal of Ballast Point. I get what you're saying. It's not like Stone. Yeah, not it's, like it's Stone. It's not like even Sierra Nevada. Lagunitas. Lagunitas. It's not a, yeah. it, it was never a big player. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think they're just in California now. I'm trying to remember if they have. Like for some reason, I'm thinking they have a North Carolina branch but i think that's stone that i'm confusing them with so i don't know i don't know either i do know stone is in north carolina with a lot of other fucking other big breweries like sierra nevada has one out there i want to say new belgium has one out there too but yeah you know i think is on that same level as ballast point is goose island like they're really big in Chicago, but outside of that, like yeah, people know of them countrywide, but they're not really that big. I don't know, and they're fine. I just, uh, I don't, I don't like Goose Island. No, they're not great. They're very like Ballast Point. I like. I I just don't like. No, I agree. I again, I agree. Yeah, I I like Ballast Point quite a bit. Actually, they have a lot of good beers. I don't really like Goose Island at all. They have like, they have like a f- couple like lagers. I'll drink. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Goose Island to me is like, hey, we're corporate sellouts. One hundred percent. Like they they are uh, they they sell a 4% IPA in Oklahoma so they can be in grocery stores. 
they uh they're everywhere in at least the last couple times that i've been to vegas i try to avoid vegas like the plague but last couple times in vegas i've been there like and they're like a billion dollars because it's vegas and they're 312 i think it's a wheat ale um so 312 is chicago's area code just make it a half you know sure and uh the 312 i don't even think is brewed in chicago anymore so it's like (laughs) what (laughs) excuse me yeah i'm not yeah yeah like you said definition of sellout really it's good for you hope you made your money yeah, no one's mad about you guys making money. I just your beer just sucks. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't want to drink your beer. Fine. Yeah, I'm not your market. That's okay. Clearly. Uh, you want to talk about this beer? We can do that. Let me pour my second one. Yeah, going real slow. Kind of what I was hinting. Yeah, at. yeah, yeah. If I can stop babysitting your drink. Get out of my way. What do you, now that you've drank a full one, what are you thinking? It's reminding me what I've had previously. And of the three, although I do think it's pretty good, is my least favorite of the three. So, good. Ollie's definitely the best. No questions asked. Second back, sir. Third, Ollie. Yeah. Cool series, because... Uh, Rating they, done, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they, they put out some, like, pretty good tasting IPA, so not, never mad about that. And granted, like, saying that this is the third doesn't mean it's a bad beer. Right, uh, right. Doesn't mean when this comes up in September, I won't get it. Yeah. It's just uh, least favorite of the three. Yeah, definitely. Always fucking banging, though. Yeah, I really hope. I mean, that should be now, right? I don't know. Ish. You go to Costco again. True. True. What did they have? The twelve packs of it. I think so. It's crazy, dog. Fremont Ollie. I'm hoping it just says like right, right away. Now. Yeah. When. When it is. Uh, availability mid-April through August. That is right now. I have not seen it. Because they used to have this shit at, like, every Safeway and every Fred Meyer. And I'm not seeing it. And I was even recently at the Fred Meyer, uh, out towards UP, where I would get Ollie all the time, and it was not there. So, what the fuck? I don't know. What's it look like? Uh, It's a bit yellowy-orange. I feel like it's probably just most... Yeah. I'm going to say yellowy-orange, final answer. Uh, it autocorrected yellows dash orange, and I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's what I said. Uh, the head is uh, it sticks around. It's a little little I, soap head. I said soapy head. Yeah, I predicted it. Yeah, look at that. Um, do you see any funk in it? That it's uh, I don't think so. I see some stasis funk. Really, I don't. Like when you wobble it? I know what you mean, but... It could be my glass, granted. Yeah, I think it's your glass, dude. I don't see anything in mine. It's got a slight haze. It's not... Like, I thought it was going to be more clear. It's not. No, yeah. Clear. Yeah. I'm going to say slight haze. Yeah. Quite the opposite of opaque. It's not the opposite of opaque. It's like a... It's like a... Wait, opaque. Opaque means you can't see through yeah. it. Yeah, it's like the definition of opaque. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like seventy five percent opaque. Yeah, I, I'll give you that. Compared to translucent, is the word. Yeah, I get the mixed up. Yeah, that's yeah. It's evident. I have found the sweet spot of where I could see through this beer, 
and there's stasis funk. I see what you mean, but you're not confident enough to comment on it. Yeah. Okay. We can we can take it out. Well, I haven't put it in, so we could we can refrain from putting <laughs> we it. We could in. we could just keep it how it is. I cannot put it in. Nobody wants that. Okay. I uh, smell. Yeah, what do you smell? Melon. Okay. I smell. This is going to be a weird one. Oh, it smells not good at all. It's not a great smell. No, it actually smells bad. I was waiting to get there. But melon, and I'm going to throw out a weird one, like vegetal cactus, like yeah. aloe vera kind of, like weird. But not a nice aloe not, vera. Not in a good way, but no. like in a weird, weird way. Like it's kind of rotting. Like a kind of rotten vegetal cactus. I'm going to say funky aloe vera. I feel like aloe vera is not accurate. I like your cactus better than aloe vera. Funky cacti? Yeah. Aloe vera, even in, in its... Yeah, aloe vera is more medicinal yeah, than this is. Yeah, it's it's a nut. I like aloe vera. And I'm just going to say not great. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate. That's pretty... <laughs> Melon, funky, cacti, and not great. Now I'm interested, now that cacti is on my mind, if this is going to change my perception of taste. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Because, I mean, up front... You get like, I mean, it's very hoppy, very bitter. Like, like we, I mean, A, the Ibus called it out, even though we don't believe him. B, Levy called it out when we were talking about the hop varietals in it. Um, and it just actually came true, which was nice. Cause I like a nice hoppy beer. So, uh, what are you getting now after we dissected smell? What are you getting on taste here? I said, basically, same thing as you. Up front, bitter and hoppy. Yeah. Can taste soapiness. Yeah. Orange melon wombo combo. Oh, I thought that was wombo. Wombo okay. combo. Okay. Um, I think thinking of cacti contextualizes the beer to me, for me. It makes it a little bit more cohesive, but I don't necessarily taste the cactus. I just taste less soapiness. Yeah. See, the thing for me, cacti as a flavoring should make it uh, like a little herbal and a little bit more refreshing, kind of like maybe not to the same degree, but similar to like a cucumber. It shouldn't really add to a taste. It should just be a perception of freshness. Have you eaten cactus before? Uh-huh. I have not. Do you like it? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious about it. That's all. Yeah. Um, Seems appealing. Yeah, I'd put it like in the same, like not as watery by any means, but like same family as like a uh, cucumber type thing. Interesting. Exist. Sure. Like a uh, uh, shit. Yeah. Totally. Totally tubular. Totally Kyle. Like a pickle. Nope. Like a eggplant. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Eggplant, and then what's the other one that's like yellow? Squash. Yeah, like that stuff. I don't like it. I don't like squash. I like eggplant. I think eggplant has a flavoring, but. Is it similar to that? Or I don't really eat those fresh, to be honest. I've never just like taken a bite out of an eggplant. Oh, you just took a bite out of a cactus? No, I don't know how I ate okay. cactus. But. Okay. Yeah, I feel... Oh, man. Yeah, I want some cactus now. I don't even know what it tastes like. Uh, Feel? Uh, I'm writing oddly thick, but not... Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like that makes sense to me. So I'm happy to edit it according to your desires, but that's how I feel about it. I've got I've got dual dual body thickness in my mouth when I drink this. So you like the oddly thick but not? Yeah, there's okay. there's some like oh what what, what going mm, on? Like it kind of sticks around. Like it, I'll, I'll put sticky in there. Yeah, it's a bit stick. 
I haven't had a sticky beer in a while, I feel like. And then uh, Entre Critiques, like we've been kind of saying, it's a bit soapy, but it, it absolutely could be just because it's almost a year old. And then uh, you also state, which I agree with, that it could be a little more crisp, a little more sharper. Uh, just refine them edges a bit. Yeah. Not, not so sweet, not so stick. I think this runs into the danger which Idaho, Idaho, Idaho 7 can run into often. Is like it does have that, uh, like while it has those melon flavors, you always want it to be like, a honeydew melon where it's like yeah almost uh tart and like very crisp and clean but like when you add a bunch of sugar to it it just kind of is like almost honey like and that kind of thing just doesn't pair well with the bitter hoppiness of an ipa it's a bit much like if this was in like a hef or a wheat beer and it had that honey like kind of stickiness that I could see it contextualize a little bit better. But with the contrasting like Simcoe Centennial hops, it just leaves a bit to be desired. I get that. I get that. For me. No, I I totally agree. 100%. I, the more, and this is kind of I felt the last time too, where it's like the first time I drank it, I was like, oh, that's pretty good. But then, like, the more and more I drank it, Drink I was like, couple. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, it's just, I don't love it. But compared to the Ollie, like, Ollie ends crisp. It's got, like, that right bitterness, hits well with that, like, hoppy, funk, weedy funk kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, this doesn't need to be the Ollie, but I, I think, I think there's some refinement that can be had on this one. Yeah. No, 100%. This, this tastes like it, wants to be total domination but it also wants to live in california yeah like it doesn't have the the malts to to give it that backbone yeah yeah so it's just kind of weird yeah actually i didn't think about that so and that's and that's i think that's where it suffers most is it you even if you can't pinpoint it like you could tell you're like there's a bit of an identity crisis going on like if you went less honey and more caramel Sure, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't. It's still not going to be your favorite beer, yeah, but I feel like but it'd, it'd be, be better. better beer. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I agree. I think I agree. So, um, ah, uh, I think I'm good. Me too. Okay, three, two, one, three. three. I'm in the fine category. Are you as well? I am actually in the good category. Oh, I okay. Get, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think we're basically going to agree, though. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think you're just enjoying it a little bit more than me. That's the only difference. Yeah. Go ahead. Explain yourself. Yeah. No. I mean, I think we both very. I think we we both clearly see what, what are the differences between good and fine. Alvin, idiot. Let me show you because I don't remember. Uh. Fine. We have it listed as that it's got the concept. It's there. It's doing it. It's just not super well executed. Bumping it up into a three, into that good category, saying that it's solid. The concept's there, and it's pretty well executed. I feel like we need a pretty well there. I feel like I feel like that's I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm just thinking. We'll consult the board. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, we'll bring it up. Yeah, so you say pretty well executed, and then in the tier above it, in great, you say well executed. I think mm-hmm. that's a good differentiation, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. So basically, I think between between Levy and I, I'm I'm just saying that it's a little, uh, it's executed a little less well than he thinks. Um, I think it is it is a pretty good beer. It is tasty. Like you said, like, you know, when this rolls around in September, like I see it, probably will grab it at some point when it's out. Um I like the series in general. It's it's got a good bitterness profile, which I love about it. I think that a lot excuse me, of the IPAs lately 
I feel like a lot of IPAs that a lot of breweries are making lately, like they're like afraid of going too bitter. Like there is still the handful where like like something like this where they're like, yeah, 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 we'll jack with the bitterness. But like I just feel like I remember like 2015 where it was like it was easy to find a, t- a bit of an IPA that was too bitter. And now I feel like people have shied away from that. A little. Yeah, I think. Um, so this is nice in that regard. I think uh, the hazy crowd probably really killed that for like the bitter IPAs. That's exactly what I was thinking. They're like, oh, all these IPA drinkers want like fruited bullshit. Like people like us kind of got abandoned on that, which is fine. But like sucks. Yeah, hopefully it just comes back around. But it will. I think so too. I mean, and actually it has like. It's true. In in a lot of ways it has because a lot more breweries are um uh, like going out of their way to say like this is a West Coast IPA, which you didn't have before. Right. Yeah, that is absolutely true. Even E9, right? We would go to E9, and they just didn't say anything like this. Oh just god, they would just say IPA and I'd be like, Oh my lord, can you please like I'm going to ask you about every single one, and you're probably going to relatively inaccurately tell me what it is um and that's just because of personal preference and you know people just have different ideas about shit than others so you know what we consider to be a west coast ipa might not be exactly what someone else considers so uh there's just too much discrepancy there and so when they at least label it like that at least you have a lot better of an idea okay this is what you're getting into so but but yeah i mean overall pretty good beer not mad about it but feel like they could improve it a bit make it a little sweet i agree with you make it make it a little bit more crisp and i'd be happier yeah i mean i really don't have any, anything like we're basically the same fucking rating yep. and feeling honestly so like you said i think you just are enjoying it a little bit more just than i am a little bit more a wee bit more that's all uh all right we'll see you guys uh in a couple weeks that'll be Nice and tan, coming back from Atlanta. <laughs> I got broads in Atlanta. And uh, that's the only song I know that says Atlanta. That's the only song I know, too. It's probably not true, but like... <laughs> yeah, right. But like, it's all I can think of. the most evident one. Yeah. Uh, go check out Pints. It's our, our favorite series that we film, and it's probably the best content that we produce, so... For sure. See you guys in a couple weeks.